Hi, how are you all doing? Yeah. Enjoying the conference? Perfect. Ready to hear about WebAssembly, Service Worker, and WebP? Yeah, yeah perfect. Let's get started. Hi, my name is Kenneth. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter if you use Twitter. I know a lot, not a lot of people use that in Denmark, but I will tweet out the slides later. Um, I work on browsers at a small company called Intel. Um, you might have heard of them. They might sit inside your laptop or something like that. Um, I mostly uh, am responsible for our web strategy, what we're doing on the web, how we're moving web technology forward. Uh, I'm also an elected member of the W3C Technical Architecture Group, um, and I'm also a Google Developer Expert. So uh, we're going to talk a bit about uh, something really cool today. So we were talking about this thing called WebAssembly or WASM. Uh, but first of all, we all know the web is really awesome. So, but sometimes you need a little bit more power than what you can get today. Or you have like existing codes, maybe you've written it over 30 years. So you're not going to rewrite that all in JavaScript because it might take you longer. Or maybe, maybe moving to the web is not always a piece of cake. But I'm here to tell you that the web landscape is about to change. We're introducing something new called WebAssembly. You might have heard about it. It's a new technology that will enable a new class of web apps. Web apps that are more capable and powerful than ever. Uh, we already know that the web is pretty great. I see there's a lot of people signed up for the web uh, community dinner tonight, so that's pretty cool. It's safe. Uh, it has relatively low friction. You kind of know it. Everything starts from the URL bar. Just type in an address, and there you go to a website. It's not something like, ah, first you have to, to install this, wait for 200 megabytes to download, wait for it to install. No, it already starts there. But while the web is really great, it also has a certain set of limitations. You don't see like all these high-end games on the web. You don't see like uh, cat uh, professional video editors and things like that. But why is that? Well, basically, it's, you don't see applications that require a lot of calculations with very low latency. Kind of things that are like CPU bound, like close to the metal. Um, you might be able to delegate some of this to the cloud, run it there, but then you'll introduce a bit more like latency, plus you have to pay for it. Uh, so better that it runs on people's own laptops and, and, and phones than on my infrastructure, because that costs me money. And for this, we have something called WebAssembly. So WebAssembly is a new capability for the web. It's not a new com programming language, but it's more like a compile target for the existing languages that exist today. Um, it's fast, it's portable, and it's secure. Uh, formally, uh, the working group uh, specifies this like this. They say WASM, that is the other name for WebAssembly, is a new portable, size, and load time efficient format suitable for compilation to the web. It's kind of like, you can think of it like kind of like a byte uh, level, by, uh, low level bytecode that is efficient both to load and to execute. So it's small, supposed to be, it's binary. Um, this means it's fast to load, you don't need to download that much. And it's also really fast to execute. It's not like JavaScript where you have to first like pass it. Uh, it's, it's written in a way that's supposed to be really fast. So many things come up with this question. So is this a replacement for JavaScript? Because we kind of like JavaScript. No, it's actually not. So let's get rid of some of the misconceptions. WebAssembly is not a new programming language. And it's not, neither is it intended to replace JavaScript. Instead, it's like this compile target for the existing programming languages, such as like C, C++, and, and Rust. Currently, mostly programming languages that don't require garbage collecting. Uh, garbage collecting will be supported in the future, so you could expect to be able to run like .NET, Python, and the like. Um, it also still lives inside the same sandbox as, as your browser. So a lot of people think this is ah, WebAssembly, so this means I finally I get access to my file system, and I can do whatever I want to do. No, you cannot. It runs inside the browser, the same sandbox. So if you want to do something, you have to use the exact same function calls that you use on, like when you're using JavaScript. But it is, it is getting a few more capabilities than JavaScript. There's some things that are really difficult to add to JavaScript that doesn't make a lot of sense. For instance, uh, JavaScript, adding threads to JavaScript makes it really, really complicated uh, and will like, make a lot of things just break. So that's, we, we cannot really do that. Uh, because we have closures and whatnot. And that works really well, and it works even really well with web workers. But to WebAssembly, we can add threading support. We can even add something called SIMD, which stands for Single Instruction Multiple Data, where in, like, in one instruction, you can maybe multiply four values. Um, so you could put it this way, that, that WebAssembly is really perfect for a lot of the use cases where the web currently doesn't shine. So for instance, game engines. 
Like who doesn't want to get all these high level games on in their web browsers, easy to download and play? Um, or like something like AutoCAD or photo editors and the like. So here's an example of Google showing they actually made uh, Google Earth run using WebAssembly. This is not published, uh, published uh, yet because they still require thread support which is not launched uh, in WebAssembly at this point. Here's another example they highlighted uh, at Google I.O. this year. This is actually uh, basically like this is AutoCAD. So this is Autodesk AutoCAD. Uh, they, they refactored the whole C++ code base uh, into different modules so that you only download what you need. And they made like basically all the 2D drawing uh, effects work in the browser. This covers 90% of all AutoCAD files out in the wild. So this is pretty amazing. So they basically just made a view that is all powered by WebGL and WebAssembly and the legacy code base. And then all the components, the, the UI parts are just written in, the, I believe they actually used React. So they're just using like regular web technology. So it's pretty amazing that WebAssembly opens up this world that you can take all these existing code bases, libraries that exist out there that have been written during the last 30 years. And this is actually one of the things I want to show you today. Because like, for instance, there are a lot of browsers out there that don't support WebP. I know it's getting better. I know that Edge is supporting it now. And I believe from the next version of Firefox, Firefox will also support WebP. But it, they didn't support it while I, when I wrote this uh, presentation. So I felt like, hey, this would be pretty cool. There's a library out there. Could we make this work on the web? So let's look at that example and my journey trying to make this work. So first of all, WebP is a very efficient image format. It's based on Google's codecs called VP9. So I said, hey, this is a really, really efficient uh, codec for video. Maybe we can use it for images as well. Um, so this is pretty cool. The files are smaller, less to download, faster websites. So I looked at the, the lib WebP, uh, and I found out there was actually already someone who had added some uh, WebAssembly support into the, the library that, was, um, that worked by using the canvas tag. So basically, you would have to supply the canvas, and they would actually render to it. So hey, cool. I, I, tried, I tried that, and pretty quickly, I got something on the screen. I felt like, wow, this is amazing. Uh, this actually really, really works, and it's fast. So. Um, in order to compile it, I used a, a tool chain called mscripten. So mscripten is an older tool chain written by Mozilla because they started out by trying to compile C and C++ code into JavaScript, or a subset of JavaScript they call asm.js, basically what they could make efficient. Uh, but a lot of the problems is that if you write something, in, in, for instance, in C and C++, you're using libraries. You might be using SDL for drawing something, or you might be using OpenGL, you might be using libaudio. And those things don't exist in WebAssembly. So you kind of like need to map that, maybe SDL to a canvas tag by using OpenGL or WebGL. And mscripten just takes care of that for you. It just like generates this boilerplate code, the uh, JavaScript file that you will import as well, and it just automatically works. It's really amazing. So this example was actually using SDL inside of the, the C++ library. So to compile it, I just like you know, just launched uh, mscripten uh, specified that I wanted to compile to WebAssembly and not asm.js. Um, I made sure that what function it shouldn't remove, don't optimize away my WebP decode because that's actually what I'm using, and please generate this like JS file. So this this actually worked pretty well. It's, it's kind of really really interesting. So this is my my small code. You don't need to look at all the details. Um, I don't know if this is a pointer. So I uh, generated this function called load webp image. Um, it's an async function. It, it waits until the module is actually fetched and instantiated, because otherwise I cannot use WebAssembly. When that happens, it actually fetches the original image file, turns it into an unsigned internet aid array, generates a canvas because the library required a canvas. It calls the, the function. This is the WebAssembly function wrapped in JavaScript. And then it just like converts it to a data URL. Not really the, <laughs> the most efficient way of doing this, but it worked. And I was really, really happy. So I thought like, hey, we can do this better, uh, especially because we have something called Service Worker today. So if you don't know about Service Worker, it's kind of this proxy that's in between your client and the web. So if you're, for instance, offline, you can still talk to the Service Worker. So this is pretty cool because you can build like offline experiences like, hey, am I online? OK, get it, get it from the server. Uh, if not, just get it from the service worker on my cache. But, uh, 
but the cool thing is that you can intercept fetches. So for like, ah, every time I'm trying to get a WebP file just in an image tag, maybe I can just like, instead then like load my WebAssembly module and convert it into something the browser understands, like PNG. Hmm. So let's just take a small uh, sneak peek because this actually works. And um, I installed a browser here called Firefox that doesn't support uh, WebP. Uh, so I don't know if this is too small. Maybe I can, uh, I don't know how to use Firefox. <laughs> I, I hope you can read this. <laughs> But you see there are some images here. If, if you look at the expect elements, you should see the WebP. Yeah, see the WebP files? Now let's go back to my network tab. Let me just like reload so you can see this is actually working. Then you see here that it's actually trying to fetch these WebP files. But the cool thing is that from my service worker, these are these files, it, this actually returns PNG, uh, BMP files. So this is my final product. Uh, and this is what is getting rendered. So this actually works. It's pretty cool. And let's see if we can present again. What? This is not my computer. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, pretty cool. So my, um, I went through a few different approaches, so let's just go through them together. So initially, I said like, hey, let's run WebAssembly in a service worker. We intercept the fetches and return an image element somehow, something that the browser can like, actually render. So what about like PNG blob? Uh, that's better than generating a base64 version <laughs> in the URL. So in order to get a blob, I forgot, how do I get a blob uh, from this? Well, first of all, um, uh, you need to use a canvas uh, in, in browsers, and well, those are not available in workers. So they're not available in service workers. So I was like, oh my god, this, this is not going to work. But then I found out there's a new standard called offline or off-screen canvas. I said, like, ah, I can use that. But it's implemented behind a flag in Chrome and Firefox. And also the API differs because they implemented different versions of that spec. So if you look at can I use, it says, <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> you cannot use this. But yeah, this was just like a proof of concept. So like, let's, let's try anyway. Yeah. So actually, I made it work. So that was pretty cool. Uh, it, it even works on Firefox on it's an Android version of Firefox on Chrome OS. So it's pretty amazing. So let's, let's look at the code and see what I did there. First of all, my approach was let's generate, let's, let's not use what is in, web, like in the WebP itself, because that's using SDL. Let's generate my own library, C library. Let me decode to red, green, blue, alpha. Um, then somehow this is going to, into my WebAssembly heap. That's how WebAssembly works. Uh, to explain how WebAssembly works is that when you instantiate a WebAssembly module, you give it a certain set of imports. These are things from JavaScript that you want to call into from WebAssembly. For instance, like, hey, I need to access a canvas, or I need to, to send out sound somehow. I need to be able to talk to the browser APIs. So, you give it some imports. Then you also, it, you, the WebAssembly module will give you some exports. These are functions you can call from JavaScript. OK. So when you instantiate it, it generates a heap in JavaScript. This is where everything happens in WebAssembly. So when I'm, I'm calling this function from WebAssembly, it's going to write that data down into my WebAssembly heap. Uh, so somehow I need to take this data from the heap and put them over in my JavaScript world so I can like, free it. Uh, because it's a C library. And when I have done that, um, I generate a, a blob from it using this like, off-screen canvas. So this is, uh, this is basically my mini library. So I start by including uh, mscripten, because I'm using mscripten. I just use the decode function from WebP. Then I uh, do a few functions. I add this mscripten keep alive, so please don't remove this function when you do optimizations, because no one is calling it. Uh, this one just gets the info. It will give you, uh, actually, will give you whether, it's tr whether it worked, so result, like true or false, uh, whether it succeeded. Then it will give you the width and the height if it succeeded. So I allocate, this is memory allocate, this is a C++ code, a C code. So three times the size of an int, that is my array. Then I call this like function that comes from this library. I give it the data, the size, and it writes to width and height. 
and re return these. So this is my first function. The second function is my decode function. That's what I'm really interested in. And that will call this webp decode red, green, blue, alpha, and return the buffer or pointer to where that is on my heap. Then I needed to compile it. So I really, really dislike build systems. So, but I Googled a bit and found out, hey, does this CMake thing? I kind of remember that because I used to work on Qt, so I used to work on C++ a lot. So I went through all these details, and it wasn't actually that difficult, but I had to include a few files and compile it, and suddenly, yeah, that actually all worked out. Unimportant details. Then I, I wrote this small library called WebP Decoder. So because mscripting does a lot of magic, uh, it has this module thing, and because this has to work in a worker, I need to do some hacks. Then I, I generate this function called fetch webp decoder, which will return a class to me, which has a few functions like info, decode, decode to blob. Uh, so basically, the first thing I do is that I have to wrap these uh, WebAssembly functions to something that JavaScript can understand. So this is how it works in, uh, in mscripting. Name of the function, what is returning, so that's an address, so that's a number in JavaScript. And it also takes, I think, the, the data pointer, so that's a number, and the size, a number. And then it returns my class. Then I added these uh, nice functions to make it easy to work with. So if, if we look at my, my C code, get info, it returns an array of three numbers. So the first thing I'm trying is to get the, the first one. Get value at this address it is an int 32. If that's not working, well, then I just free the memory and return like null. If it's working, then I take the offset. Offset is four bytes, that's 32. So that's the next number. Four bytes later, I get the next number. Then I get width and height. Then I can free the memory and return it. So remember that it stores like all the data in, 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 in this like WebAssembly land happens in WebAssembly land in that buffer. So I need to copy that. So I'm just copying that data uh, from WebAssembly world into JavaScript world. Um, so this is my decode function. First of all, I just call the function I just created to get the width and height. So now I know how much memory I need to allocate. Then I decode the function. I get a, a point and address to where that is in the heap. Then I generate a view, like how to, how to actually look at these data. And then I copy it. So this is just a copy. So now it's, it's in JavaScript world garbage collected world, and then I free the, the code from WebAssembly. So I'm just like decoding, uh, and then when I have the data, I generate something called an image data from this unsigned integer uh, array. Then I generate a PNG blob, and then I somehow paint that. Pretty cool. So my, my cool function for, uh, for generating a blob just calls my info, which then calls my decode, generates an image data, because with an image data, you can paint to a canvas. So I generate a canvas. I use the same size as the, as the image. Then I paint the image at 0.0, .0 so it fills the whole canvas. Then I check whether I'm using Firefox or, or Chrome, and I call this function that, that gives me a blob. And now I'm going through the same again. Any problems? You know, well, you already know that off-screen canvas doesn't really work. It actually worked really badly in Firefox, but it worked in Chrome. So you might wonder, maybe there is a better approach. Yes, uh, actually, I posted this on Twitter, and people said, like, why don't you use BMP? BMP is basically raw data with a few headers, and it works in any browser. So they, huh, that's nice. I remember using PNG at some point. So I looked at Wikipedia. I said, ah. This is the headers. This looks terrible. This looks very complicated. But hey, I just followed it and, and implemented a BMP image decoder. Just like reading what was on Wikipedia, and magically, then I could have actually use this to decode it. It will give me an image BMP blob. Wow. Then I started using my service worker, because this is the cool part. First of all, I intercept all my fetches. If it's a get, if it ends by .webp, so please, it only works with if they're called .webp at the end. If not, then I just get it from the network. Then I will actually fetch the data. I will turn that into an array buffer so I can read the buffer. Then I get my webp decoder, and I end up decoding it to BMP, a BMP blob. 
And then I just return a response that is an image BMP. And that's basically it. And then it works. So, success. So, my final approach was basically generate my own library using C, uh, decode to RGBA, red, green, blue, alpha. Take that data that is written down to the heap in WebAssembly land, copy it over to JavaScript land, um, then free the original data, generate an image buffer, and, and load that uh, as a uh, BMP blob using my BMP encoder. So I, I think this is really, really amazing to see what you can do with WebAssembly today and what you can do with something like Service Worker. Like, you can really polyfill like, features that don't exist. It, it's really, really amazing. Uh, so with that said, I think you should all try and go home and play a bit around with WebAssembly. It's super awesome new technology, uh, and it's amazing what you can build. I will be posting these slides online, and if you have any questions, feel free to talk to me at any point. And enjoy Coldfront. <laughs>